Hello there, Crowd Chocolate TV people. I'm Greg D'Alessander, the Chief Sourcing Officer for Dandelion Chocolate out of San Francisco, California. I am not here with Dylan today, which is kind of sad. I love hanging with Dylan. But today, I'm going to talk about cadmium. Um, I know that a lot of people have lots of questions about cadmium all the time. And as we film this, there was just a report written uh, more about cadmium and chocolate. And so I figured today what we're going to talk about is three different things. The first thing I'm going to talk about is if you're just worried about is cadmium, in, is there cadmium in chocolate? Is it dangerous? What should I know? I'm going to talk about that first. If you get through all of that and then want to hear more about if you're a cacao producer or a chocolate maker, what do you need to know? What do you need to do about it? I'll talk about that, but I'll also talk about at the end, if you're like a chocolate maker who people have a lot of questions for you, like I am and like people do, then I'll go through what we usually talk about and how we talk about cadmium and chocolate. All right, so let's dive in. So cadmium and chocolate, does it exist? Absolutely. Is it dangerous? Well, that's a really solid question. Uh, so cadmium is a heavy metal. Uh, it's a heavy metal that is naturally in, occurs in soil. Uh, it's from the Earth's crust. It gets brought into cocoa trees uh, as they're growing. It gets distributed into the leaves and the pods and eventually the beans. So when you take a cocoa pod off of a tree, there will potentially be cadmium in it. Uh, that cadmium, there's more in, uh, let's say, newer soil or less used soil. And so there's a lot more cadmium in kind of uh, in places that farming hasn't been done as much or as frequently or places that have um, sort of newer soil that's been pushed up from the Earth's crust. So what this means in practicality is there tends to be more cadmium in South American cocoa than there is in African cocoa. Again, this is a gross generalization, but in general, that tends to be true. The places where there tends to be the most cadmium are Peru, Ecuador, and Colombia, but it doesn't mean there's no cadmium in other places. It also doesn't mean there's cadmium in all of the cocoa from those places, but those are just sort of the general guidelines. So in terms of is cadmium dangerous? Well, First of all, I'm going to say I am not a doctor and I'm not a lawyer, but I've read a lot about cadmium. Um, so there is a lot of connections uh, between cadmium and cancer, specifically cadmium workers. So people who breathe in cadmium, uh, there's a lot of data showing that the that people who work with cadmium, uh, and so this is like people like uh, working with cadmium that is used to make like NICAD batteries, for instance. And so we know that heavy metals can cause cancer. And we know that cadmium can cause cancer if you're breathing it in. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of data to say cadmium could cause cancer if you ingest it. Are there a lot of studies to show people who have had uh, cancer because eating cadmium? I actually haven't been able to find any studies that have shown that connection. It doesn't mean they don't exist. I just haven't been able to find any studies that show that. All of the studies I've seen connect uh, um, cadmium that you breathe to to cancer. Um, there's even a, a citation in uh, Australia's uh, health department website saying that they don't believe there's any connection between consumption of cadmium and uh, and cancer. But again, I'm not a doctor. This is what I've found in well internet research. Okay, so why are we worried about cadmium and chocolate if we don't know if there is a direct causal relationship between eating cadmium and getting cancer? Uh, well, I, it, it largely started in California in the U.S. with something called Prop 65. And a proposition in California in the U.S. is basically something that anyone can write and as long as it's voted... Uh, it, it, the majority of voters voted in, it becomes law. So this was not written by doctors. This was something written by lawyers and environmentalists concerned about toxic chemicals in the environment. It covers hundreds of compounds and basically lists for every compound the, the amount that you can consume per day if you consumed that amount every single day times a thousand it would be shown to not give you any harmful side effects. I know that was a lot to say, so I'm going to write it down because that's a lot to process. I'm trying to write with a marker while I speak, and so we'll see how well this goes, right? So this is 4.1 micrograms per day. This is U.S. California Prop 65. 4.1 micrograms per day every day for your life 
is one one thousandth of the amount that there's a study that shows that amount does not make you sick. Now you might be wondering like, well, okay, do, what do I care about what doesn't make me sick? I care about what does make me sick. Totally fair question, but that's not how the proposition was written. The way the proposition was written is those numbers are set by taking studies that are proven to not cause a bad effect. Then you divide that number by a thousand, divide that number by days in your life, and that's where this 4.1 micrograms per day comes from. For me personally, this, this sounds to me like this is well, well, well below the limit of something I should be worrying about. And in fact, uh, leafy greens take a lot of cadmium up in them. So kale, lettuce, I believe sunflowers um, take a fair bit of cadmium into the seeds. Um, there's a fair bit of cadmium in tobacco. So when you smoke, you get cadmium. There's a lot of larger sources of cadmium in the environment other than chocolate. So this, is, so this is one regulation around it. The other regulation that I know of is in the EU. So this is 0.1 milligram per kilogram to 0.8 milligrams per kilogram, which is the amount of cadmium that can be in chocolate legally. So Prop 65 says you have to warn consumers if this number, if the amount in your product exceeds this number. The EU says you can't sell it if it exceeds this number. I don't actually know where the EU got these numbers from. Um, and you'll notice that there's a big difference between 0.1 milligram per kilogram and 4.1 micrograms per day. Like, wait, how, how do those two numbers line up? But okay, so that's, what, what's the concern about cadmium? Should I be worried? Make your own decision. So now though, Let's say you're a cacao producer or you're a chocolate maker and you're saying, okay, so there's these regulations in the US and the EU telling me how much cadmium I can have in my chocolate. What do I do with that? Okay, so great question. There's a couple of things. If you're a cacao producer, the first thing to understand is how much cadmium is in your cocoa. And this is something that a lot of cacao producers already measure, um, especially because once the EU regulations came into, into place, uh, everybody, all, all of the importers needed to know how much cadmium was in it because this is something that really impacts what they're able to sell, etc. Um, so if you're a cocoa producer, it's really important to understand how much cadmium is in your cacao. Uh, is it possible to reduce the amount of cadmium in the cacao? I said it came from soil. Does that mean you're, you're just screwed if you have cadmium? The answer is no. There are ways that you can start to mitigate that. Um, uh, if you basically... Uh, more acidic soil uh, means the tree won't consume as much cadmium and so you can like lime your soil. It can be expensive but there are things you can do. The other thing is if you're working with a group or a co-op you can blend cocoa that has more cadmium with cocoa that has less cadmium because you're really only just worried about the total cadmium in the final chocolate. There are no regulations around the cocoa itself, it's just in the final products. So if you're worried about cadmium in the final chocolate, you can do blending of beans, you can do milk chocolates. There's a bunch of things you can do to, to, to sort of find that balance. Just recently, prior to this filming, Consumer Reports did a report. Um, in the report, they, uh, they tested a number of chocolate bars for cadmium and lead. Uh, unfortunately, they did something that was a, a little sort of hard to read, which is they used the Prop 65 numbers, but didn't explain what those Prop 65 numbers meant. They just said, this is, this is essentially what we're testing for. So the implication is over that number is somehow d definitively dangerous or definitely dangerous instead of over that number is just sort of unknown, which is basically what Prop 65 is saying. So it's really important as you read these sort of, uh, um, these sort of reports to sort of scrutinize them as to what they're actually saying, not what you assume they're saying. Because they never actually say in it that it's dangerous. They just say in it that it that these are the numbers that California says. And so they tested those numbers, but they didn't actually connect that back to, and therefore it's very dangerous if you do this. They did imply it though. And so it's really important to sort of like read those with a with a very careful eye. Okay. So you're a cacao producer, you know how much cadmium you have because you get your cocoa tested. Uh, if you have cadmium, 
you look at ways to to mitigate it. Um, potentially, there are there are different cultivars, so different clones that might take up more or less cadmium. There's definitely a lot of research being done on that right now, specifically because about the EU because of the EU regulation. Um, so those are sort of the options as a cocoa producer, as a chocolate maker. Your options are your options are understand how much cadmium is in the cocoa that you're using. Uh, what are you making with that chocolate and where are you selling it? Are you selling it in California? Are you selling it in Europe? Um, there is a, you could, if you wanted to say, well, we just don't want to work with any cocoa that has any cadmium at all. And while that's a possibility, it does mean you're going to be missing out on potentially good sources of cocoa and good people to work with for what is essentially a, a, a warning label that has to be given, or in the case of Europe, there there are standards that mean you can't sell uh, chocolate because of that. So I I would just say like that that could be a heavy handed approach to just say, well, we're never going to work with a, a cocoa producer that has cadmium. Um, but again, to each their own. If you're a chocolate maker and you're thinking, oh god, this is a ton of information. Greg just spent like twenty minutes talking about this stuff. What am I supposed to do? Uh, what I'd recommend is writing up a short set of information so that the people, so that you and the people who work for you know about cadmium. I think this information that I put up here like 20 times already uh, is really important information. And this is what we talk about. We talk about cadmium is ingested through a number of sources, including leafy greens, uh, including um, legumes. Um, but talk about like, the, the, where the regulations are coming from is strictly California. It is a proposition. It was not created by doctors. It was, it was created by a set of people who were considered, were um, concerned about the toxicity of the environment. Uh, and so one of the things to make, to help your customers understand is what is their risk factor? Because a lot of them will just hear there's cadmium and chocolate and then they'll be really worried that, oh my God, I, I, you know, this, this could kill me. And the answer is it could kill you. But it's also possible that walking across the street is more likely to kill you. We don't really know because there isn't actual statistics on this. Anyway, that's that. Hopefully that was really useful and informative. Um, uh, you can post questions on the YouTube feed and I'll try to check into it every once in a while. Again, I'm Greg D'Alessander, Chief Sourcing Officer for Dandelion Chocolate, and thank you for watching.